What's up dudes, Chooch, back with another one. Today, I'm gonna to be getting into a full buyer's guide for electric unicycles. This is gonna be a completely unbiased guide to purchasing these things. If you're wanting to buy one of one of these electric unicycles, if you've seen them before, um, this is gonna be for beginners, intermediate, all the way to advanced. My opinions on pretty much um, every class of them and who, who should get what and what's going on. And I know a lot of people have questions about EUCs and which one to get. And now I really, the thing is, guys, it's hard for influencers to look at, look at it from the perspective of somebody that's not, um, that hasn't been into the hobby of EUC for a long time. Um, like, for, for example, like if somebody just found out about EUCs and they go to look at them and it's, you know, you know, December of 2022 right now, and you have all these to choose from, you have... I mean, this is just overwhelming how many EUCs there are now to choose from everywhere, from all the different sites. Uh, back in 2015, guys, whenever whenever I was getting into the hobby, you had very limited options, and it was really cut and dry. It was like, you know, it, it wasn't, you didn't have all these different options when it came to getting a wheel. And so I realized, like, people do, you know, it's, it's a hard choice, and they're expensive, and... Picking the right one is a big deal for somebody. I remember like whenever I first got into it and I didn't have different demos and I didn't have multiple wheels and stuff, it was a big choice for me because it's expensive. You want to make the right choice. It's a, it's a ton of money you're putting down for one of these things. Um, in some cases, people are using them you know, as their main source of transportation. So it's no joke. You want to get the right thing. And I'm going to help you do that. Um, to be upfront with you guys, <clears throat> um, I... I literally don't get any money from any specific company on these things. It's all commission based through these four companies right here, through E Rides, Alien Rides, um, Rev Rides, and E Wheels. Those are the companies that I recommend. Those are the companies that I work with. Um, uh, Yuko, I don't recommend them anymore. Um, they, um, a lot of people have had problems with Yuko, and they ended up never giving me the, the amount of money I should have gotten from all those sales of the S22. And people have had problems with them. I don't recommend Yuko, and I don't really recommend EVs that much. I recommend Rev Rides, Alien Rides, E Rides, and E Wheels. Those are the four that you can't go wrong with. And um, there's also reasons I don't recommend Speedy Feet. So these are the four, I, I, again, E Wheels, Rev Rides, Alien Rides, and E Rides. These are the four companies that are tried and true that I would go with if I was getting a wheel. E-Rides is a company that um, is shipping across the UK and across Europe. So if you're in the UK or in Europe or any country that's outside of the USA and you want to see if they will ship it to you, go with E-Rides. If you're in a, in a place that's like some like a, like a smaller country, for example, and you're wondering if you can get a wheel shipped there reach out to e-rides and ask them if they ship to your country and they probably will do it but this this company e-rides ships to the most places that are um, uk and europe and then other countries as well um, alien rides is based in the bay area so if you're around the bay area i would go with alien rides you can stop into the shop there and it's cool just having a brick and mortar store um, in your area if you have if you ride one of these things. So that's cool. If you're in, um, if you're up in Vancouver, Washington, and it's not Vancouver, Canada, Vancouver, Washington is kind of right in your uh, like the Portland area. Um, Rev Rides is what you're gonna want to go with, guys. Rev Rides is great. They've been um, predominantly into uh, scooters, but they started selling. Uh, electric unicycles and they're they have a full like maintenance team up there guys like a huge maintenance team a nice brick and mortar store um nate the owner of rev rides is a, a super cool guy um family man that that is just into this business and he supports everybody um you know he takes care of his workers and he runs a, a good program up there I, I really think that nate's doing a good job um, with uh, Rev Rides, he doesn't have a ton of options when it comes to wheels like um, E Wheels or Alien Rides does. But the ones that he does have, he has them in stock and ready to go. Um, 
and they they come with a great warranty and they price match and if you use the code chooch50 at rev rides for anything whether it be a scooter or electric unicycle just the code chooch c-h-o-o-c-h 50 all lowercase all together it takes all additional amount off of these wheels that are already at a really low price on here like you get the t4 right here which is probably the it's the version 2 t4 for 2200 bucks which is a great price um m10 sold out um but they got the like the exn on here um let's see the rs um they usually have this in stock it's sold out now they probably had a, a rush for black friday sales but they have a, a few options on here as well as the V-Set scooters and stuff. And this is probably the lowest price you'll find the V-Sets and everything from Rev Rides. But they're in the USA. They have stock. They're, this is a super reputable company. And, um, you know, you can get in touch with them, everything like that. So if you're looking for a great option, this Rev Rides is a great option, I think. Um links below guys all the links are below if you just use the links it doesn't matter which one of these companies you you go with it doesn't matter which wheel or brand you you get we're going to get into that in a minute uh just use the links below if you do choose to get a wheel from any of these companies that's all all it is they're all affiliate links but i'm being completely transparent with you to use anyone you want or buy from any company or wheel you want but just make sure you use the links um if you do do that and then getting into this over here with e-wheels guys e-wheels is just e-wheels is has been around the longest man e-wheels has been in the game the longest um jason that owns e-wheels he has been like without jason that owns e-wheels this hobby wouldn't be where it's at today period um he has done so much for our community and like man He's been over backwards for the EUC community, like straight up. I know I got scooters up there, but on e-wheels, like like straight up, the owner of this company right here has really helped perpetuate um, this sport to where it's at. Just be, just by his passion for it. I know he's probably making good money at this point, but it's well warranted, and he runs a great program, guys. And you got to think about like the volume he's probably turning out now with these things because eWheels is probably one of the top companies and has been one of the top companies um, in EUC sales since it started. Um, it just, it, it simply is that way. The customer service is exceptional. They reply to emails super fast. They got a one year warranty. Um, there's no frills. Anything goes wrong in that one year. They will literally bend over backwards to get you sorted out and get whatever parts you need, guys. And if it does take, uh, you know, a week or so to for him to reply, it's it's rare. Usually he replies in like less than 24 hours to any problems, you know. But eWheels is honestly like I've I'm affiliates with all the other ones, you know. But I'm telling you, eWheels is, is probably to like probably the top one you know the, you can't go wrong with e-wheels is what i'm saying you really can't go wrong with e-wheels um but this is just all all kind of for new new people that are coming in into the hobby a lot of you guys probably know this already kind of about these companies but for somebody that's new to this um they, they may even be like oh let me just get it off amazon um I, and I understand Amazon is also selling a wheel now. But honestly, guys, I would go with one of these companies that, that are reselling them simply because you do get that warranty. You get the ability to speak with them through customer service. Um, and it's pretty much the exact same price as Amazon's going to be, guys. And you're going to get the ability to speak with a representative. You're going to be able to call a company, email a company, sort out any problems, get updated Say if there's a recall or anything like that, you'll be able to get your parts way easier than having to deal with Amazon. Pretty much, once you buy it on Amazon, there's going to be no warranty on that thing. There's going to be like no way to get any more parts or anything like that. Um, that's why I don't recommend buying from like Ally Express, Amazon. I recommend these four companies: E Wheels, Rev Rides, Alien Rides, or E Rides. If you're getting an electric unicycle. You can use the Amazon links if you really want to. I, I provide those below because I know some people are like that, including myself when it comes to some things. Amazon is just convenient. I get that. But I would go with 
with these companies. These companies are tried and true, and you you, you get a lot more than if you're just buying from Amazon or AliExpress, basically. With that out of the way, now that was just for new riders and everything like that uh, to understand the buying process of these things. What wheel would, would I get for just starting off on electric unicycles, guys? It, it would be, right now, it would be the, the InMotion V12 high torque. Just because, look, it's, it's, it's on sale. It's $400 off right now, guys. This, this is rare. You can get the InMotion V12 high torque for pretty much the same price as the Kingsong 18XL. And those are the two wheels I would recommend as an entry-level wheel. Now, this is for somebody that wants to get a wheel that is going to be um, something you get out of the box and you can ride for you know two or three years, um, and it's going to completely blow your mind. You're going to get it. If, if this is your first wheel, it will literally blow your mind. The power of it, the responsiveness of it, how clean it looks. Um, the screen, the speakers, the lights, everything on the V12 high torque is just incredible, guys. You're going to love this wheel. And right now, you can look at this. You can get the high torque for $2,000. It's a, literally a steal, guys, of a price. Um, because what I would recommend otherwise for a beginner wheel or a starter wheel would, would simply be the 18XL. And if you look at the price, the price is pretty much the exact same and the the InMotion V12 is much better than the 18XL but you see the InMotion V12 is just $400 off right now for the high torque if you're going to get the V12 get the high torque version guys because the InMotion V12 high torque it's the one with the orange rim on it okay the, the it's the InMotion V where is it at right now this is it the the it, it doesn't show it in this picture right here, but the InMotion V12 high torque has the orange rim. The orange rim is the upgraded rim. The V12 high speed is a great wheel. I have both of them. Out in the garage, I have both wheels. I've raced the high speed. The high speed does go faster at 43.5 miles an hour, but I'm telling you, the high torque is way better, guys, just simply because you get the upgraded rim. The rim on the high torque one is literally a thicker way better material guys the material on the high torque rim is completely different if you hit it with a, a you know a, a metal object you can hear just the density and the quality difference on the high v12 high torque rim and that's why i say get that one over the high speed i don't know why they haven't upgraded the rims on the high speeds they still ship them with the same ones i'm thinking because um just because the way the way these things are built the rim and the motor kind of mesh together and i'm thinking they had a lot of the high speed rim and motors already made and i think once they released the v12 high torque they had to completely um, redo the whole um, motor part which they also put a brand new updated rim on there so get the v12 high torque i'm telling you you'll love it i love my v12 high torque it's great for trail riding it's super nimble um, it's easy to fit in your car. The trolley handle handles great, and the quality, the fit and finish of it is incredible. It really is a great wheel, and at two thousand dollars, it's a total steal. If you're getting into the hobby, I recommend it. Uh, I wouldn't steer people wrong on this. I told my buddy the other day to get one, and then the the guy that owned Break Free Tech, the 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 light that I have on the back of my helmet, I snowboarded with him the other day, and he got his V12 high torque in. Um, I, I recommended him buy that one straight up as an honest to God recommendation of what wheel I would get as a first wheel. I told him to get the high torque, V12 high torque. And at this price, I mean, I can't believe it's on sale for this price. I mean, I, I, if mine broke, I'd buy another one instantly at this price, straight up. I love that wheel. It's, it's phenomenal for what you pay. And another thing, too, if you're a straight up beginner, this is... I don't want to miss this part either because I had a, a, a buddy come over that's been riding for a while. He's literally, he only, he comes out here to snowboard um, like two weeks out of the year and he rides EUCs with me. And I was like, I just told him one year, like, dude, you got to learn how to ride EUCs because this is how I get around everywhere. 
I literally ride EUCs everywhere. So he learned, and he 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 likes it. He definitely enjoys it, but he just lives in like like a suburban area where he wouldn't really ride that much, you know, or he thought so for a while. But every time he came out here, we always went and rode. He's the buddy I went and rode with um, in that last video. We were riding in downtown Denver at night. Um, he ended up really liking the M10 4 out of all my wheels. So he tried all of them. I, I even gave him the M Super V3S Plus. And he just, um, he has it here as like the wheel to ride when he comes here. You know, it's his wheel, but he keeps it here to ride when he comes out here. He lives back in South Carolina and he flies out here usually. So to Colorado. But um, he tried all my wheels and he liked the M10 4, the little mini M10 4 out of all of them. And he, he is, um, I'd say, he's a decent rider he can ride like an m super v3s at like 25 30 miles an hour easily um or any of the other wheels at like 30 miles an hour fine and he's confident on it but he really liked this little wheel the m10 4 and i've done a lot of videos on this you can see but he just liked it because it the it, it's really it's not intimidating at all guys it's really easy to learn on and the price is right on this thing he liked the look of it too. He liked the form factor, the look of it, and he ended up buying one. He was like, "Hey, send me the link to buy one." Whenever he got back home, and I was like, "Are you seriously gonna get one?" He's like, "Yeah, I want to get the little little blue one that I rode." I was like, "All right, dude." I was like, "I recommend like for your first wheel getting like the V12 High Torque or like an RS19 or something," but he wanted to go with this one, and he sent me videos of him ripping around in his front yard with it, having a blast on it, and he. He's, he got this one just to be able to ride from the back of his neighborhood up to work. So he lives in like the, a suburban neighborhood, and then he owns a restaurant that's kind of outside of the neighborhood, so he can kind of skirt up on the little M10 instead of driving his truck. Um, but he, he's going to be using that, you know, to get to work. And then mainly, he we used to race dirt bikes together, so he's going to be using it as like a little pit scooter to ride in the pits of the dirt bike races, which is perfect, you know, so... M104 is a great wheel. I love mine. It's held up through a ton of abuse, dude. Um, little thing is just, it's a, so much fun. And $1,000, man, you really can't go wrong with it. And then, look, you could pick off-road tire or you could pick street tire. So it is on back order right now because I, it's just a, such a fun wheel. I bet people are buying the shit out of them. But you can, you can place your um, pre-order if you want to. I think you can. Yeah, you can place your five hundred dollar pre order on here if you want to. I love. I'm loving my little wheel, dude. Check out some of my M104 videos if you haven't. All right. So past that, so we got kind of like mid, like entry level wheels out of the way. Like what I would go with. I and like straight up, those are my recommendations when it comes to like starting off and getting into the hobby. Now, if you want to get something that's going to be a little bit more high performance getting into the hobby, something you can maybe race with, and something that's just the tried and true, just, I mean, the dark, I mean, it's the dark horse of EUCs. Like, this thing is, is just the GOAT. It really is the GOAT. And that is this, guys. And it's just, the, the hard sell of this right now, as much as I, I like, the Be Good RS19. So I have the M Super Pro, which came out right before this, but I've seen, I've gotten beat by, by the RS19 in some races. I've, I've gotten on this, these things. I, I know, like, the RS High Torque, how torquey the damn thing is. It's crazy, guys. And the power to weight ratio is what's just sick about the RS19. You got that 1500 watt hour battery in this thing, but 2600 watt motor it does not have suspension. But it's and it's a B goad, guys. So you know, I mean, the reputation with B goad is is not crazy good on all the new wheels. But this one's tried and true. This one's gonna be a good wheel. If you get this thing, you'll like it for sure. You'll love the performance of it. And the other thing you're gonna love about this is how easy it is to work on it. You can pop this side panel off quick. Get you can do a tire change on this thing in like five minutes. Like I'm being serious, dude. It's just it's not the the prettiest thing in the world like you put this right here next to the in motion v12 and you disassemble them um this in total disassembly you're going to have like a little handful of screws maybe like maybe like 45 screws in total 
if you disassemble this whole thing. If you disassemble the InMotion V12 high torque, you're going to have literally like a bucket of screws. All sort of sizes and shit. All sort of side panels. It's going to be shit all over the place. I mean, literally a conglomeration of hell is what it takes to disassemble an InMotion V12 high torque. But it's a nice wheel. It, everything in it is nice. Um, it's waterproof well, and there's just a lot of screws to it. There's just a lot to the InMotion V12 high torque. This, the RS19, is just simple. Simple, cut and dry performance, and a no frills package um, that just works. It simply just works. This is probably, this and the little T4 are probably the best made B Goad wheels um, out there right now. I'm being serious when it comes to just. The new masters and stuff with the exposed batteries and all the other bullshit on it, it's just adding too much to it. Like, this is just, you can't go wrong with the RS-19. The only thing, the reason I wouldn't get this right now, though, is just simply because the InMotion V12 is on sale. The InMotion V12 High Torque is on sale right now. So there's no, there's no way I would buy an RS-19 for $2,500 right now. If I can get an InMotion V12 high torque for $2,000, I would get the InMotion V12 high torque all day over this. All day, every day over over this for, for that price. So this is out of the picture. Until this either goes on sale or the V12 high torque goes off sale and they're back at about the same price, um, I would only get this one if you want the bigger wheel because this one this wheel is two inches bigger than the v12 high torque so if you want a smoother ride without suspension um you know this is this is what you're going to want to go with but the v12 high torque is man for that two thousand dollar price point it's it's hard to recommend anything other than that dude it's seriously and like man people i like with with in motion v12 or v13s and all these really expensive wheels coming out man like i just don't know how many people are going to be buying a four thousand dollar electric unicycle like i know people are going to get them i just don't know how many people are going to get it and how long it can be sustained for like once people once the people that buy their really expensive wheels and they get them and they're working for a while. I just don't know how much people are going to keep buying these $4,000 wheels. I may be wrong, and it may be a huge ticket item. I don't know. All right, so now we're going to be getting into the, this is the performance category. We're going to be going into the above $2,500 price point, and we're going to be talking about the guys out there that either want to upgrade from, from their first wheel or somebody that is, because there's a lot of those people man like there's for instance there's a whole bunch of people out there um like a year ago two years ago even now they wanted to buy their a sherman as their first wheel and i'm like why the hell would you buy a sherman as your first wheel i couldn't even imagine doing that guys like that's and the reason i wouldn't buy a sherman as my first wheel is just because it's so heavy guys it's so powerful and it takes a little bit of time to develop the fine skills of an electric unicycle before you you want to have a wheel that can go 50 miles an hour i'm being i'm telling you that as someone that's like a daredevil i like sending it i like you know i like to send send life all that woohoo but i'm telling you you don't want to start with a wheel a heavy wheel like the sherman max or the sherman s um i wouldn't start with um the master pro master x I wouldn't even start with a Master or a EX20 um, or a Commander or a Sherman Max. Pretty, you could pretty much start with anything else. I would, I, I would even say you could start with like an EXN just because it's just not as heavy as some of these other ones. But those that I just said, I wouldn't start with them. Like some of these big ass wheels that can go 50 miles an hour. Um, because simply guys it's going to take a little bit of time to learn the fine fine nuances of the euc of course you can learn it in an afternoon i think anybody can learn how to ride an electric unicycle in one afternoon you know get the grip of it and and be riding but when it comes to riding in traffic and coming coming to a stop at stoplights being able to put that foot down stable 
and take off, you know, without without bobbing a little bit, without being a little bit sketchy in it. That takes a little bit of time, guys. You may be able to do it with the bigger wheels. You may be able to learn it, but it's not going to be as graceful, if you know what I mean. When, like, you come to a stop in the city and you're going to take off, if you just bought, like, the V13 or one of these heavy-ass wheels as your first wheel, you know, it's not going to be as graceful and easy to just learn all the little things you need to learn um, which you could you could get a V12 for two thousand dollars, a V12 high torque, and learn everything you need to learn. Become a great you know a proficient rider, and and then switch to something faster and heavier down the road. And I think that's really the best option because if you buy one of these expensive heavy wheels as your first wheel, it's going to get damaged, and you're you're literally going to be crashing like a four thousand dollar wheel. Um, and bashing it up, scratching it, denting headlights, all that type of stuff, and I w I just wouldn't do that. I just I wouldn't recommend all that. I'd get something like the V12 High Torque is a tank of a wheel. That little thing's a tank. Um, also, don't want to look over stuff like this. Just like also, if you if you don't want to go up to something big, man, like the 16S is a great starter wheel. 14D is a great start starter wheel. All these right here are great starter wheels. But I just think at the price point, like if you just want to get into the hobby and it looks like something you want to go for, the V12 High Torque is just, you get a huge watt hour for the price and a sick wheel for the price. So I wouldn't even, like right now while this is on sale, I wouldn't even look at this. If like you've been looking at EUC and you, you want to get into it for sure, I'd go straight for this. Straight for this. Straight up. Even over all these, man, just because like the price right now is just, the price is right on this thing. Price is right. Straight up. And we're, now we're talking about like somebody in the position of somebody that wants to upgrade or somebody that wants to get their next performance wheel. Somebody that wants to come from one of these. They're upgrading from one of these or upgrading from like the V12 High Torque or any of these right here. Pretty much if you have any of these and you want the next thing, I would go with the Master. And even though... You know, I, I don't have a master. I don't own one. I know this is a great wheel, guys. I know the Be Good Master um, is just the power on this thing is incredible. Um, the the suspension on it works very well. It I think we'll see better suspension and you know in the years to come. But I think this is the best. I think the Be Good Master is probably the best trail riding wheel. Um, best jumping wheel, best racing wheel, uh, best performance wheel all around. Even though I don't have one, I want one. I'll tell you that I want one really bad. Um, and I just, I just haven't. Um, I, I've li recently moved, guys, and I just can't justify spending uh, three thousand dollars on a wheel right now um, when I got a whole garage full of stuff I can ride. Do I want a master? Absolutely. And I recommended this one as well to a buddy. I was like, because he was going to be riding this like at the um, the GNC. He rides races GNCCs, which is a, basically a big off road dirt bike event. Like every weekend, everybody pulls their campers up out there, and you're riding around in a big field and trails and stuff. And I was like, man, if you want something that's just going to be, you're going to be able to ride all the trails before the race because people ride. You can't ride your dirt bike on the trails before the race, but you can ride your mountain bikes on the trails. That's the loophole. So you can, if you're in shape, you can go out there on a mountain bike and crank out the track the day before it and learn all the lines and stuff like that. You just can't ride your, your motorcycle on it until race day. So people are out there with e-bikes and stuff now. That's the big thing is to take e-bikes out there and learn your lines and shit like that. And I was like, dude, get the be good master and you'll be able to go out there and really dial in your lines you know learn how to ride euc and love it like this is definitely what i would get 100 percent. like if if money if i straight up had 30 32.50 sitting right right here on the table and i wanted to get a performance euc i wouldn't look any further than the be good master straight up 134 volts you can get you can get the high range or the high power cells on this thing. If you're going to be racing it, get the high power because you don't need the range. You just need the, the fast, you know, high high discharge on this thing to get the power and, you know, the speed out of it. So get the, the 40T. 
if you're going to be racing this for any reason, for on-road or off-road, because you don't need range for races, okay? But if you're going to be getting this and you're not going to be racing it, but you just want to master because it's a great wheel, get the high range. So that would be my decision making right there when it came to this wheel. I, I definitely want one. I've been waiting on like for a Master V2 or whatever to come out, but I definitely want one. Now, what I would go with as well, and kind of in that same category as this, if you're not... If, if you're more of a trail rider and you're not into the full sin street riding and stuff like that, if you like riding trails and stuff, mainly like you see on my channel, get the T4. And I'm recommending the T4 now because the V2 T4 is out, guys. And I got the V1 T4, which was the one that had the stator slippage issue in the motor. And I, me, as well as a lot of other people, found out you know the the first one had problems and they ended up fixing that so all the ones that are shipping out now are not going to have the problems that mine had and all the ones that ship out now are also going to have okay so you can pick the knobby as well so if i was buying this i'd get the knobby tire this ensures you're going to be getting a v2 um all the ones with the knobbies are going to have the v2 I, Pretty, I know there's going to be some people that want to get the street tire. All of them now are going to be updated to the V2 uh, T4s. I mean, you're pretty much guaranteed to be getting a V2 T4 at this point. Um, mine, 100%, is still out of commission. My, I, I, I'm still waiting on parts just because they sent all the motors and everything out, out to the customers, the paying customers and everything like that before. And I told Jason, I was like, dude, you know, like I'll, I'll wait, whatever. I, I haven't been hounding them about it, but I got an update the other day. Uh, actually just created the shipping label. I got it updated, um, but I'm just waiting. I got the, the motherboard is at E-Wheels, and now they're waiting to send me the motor um, for, for my T4. From I, I If y'all didn't see the video, I tried to ride it full speed into a log to jump over the log, but it engaged that stator slippage issue, which was a great scenario to engage that so I wouldn't have it in a later time. And we were able to get that fixed, and the V2s are updated. And I think this is a great wheel. I love the T4 when I had it. I know I say that about a lot of wheels, but the T4, um, the T4 would almost replace the V12, guys. But the thing is, I, the big deal sealer and the reason why I would get the V12 high torque over this is just reliability. Like in motion, in motion is simply more reliable. If this one had the reliability the in motion that that V12 high torque did, and I was able to get as many miles out of this thing before it messed up as the V12 high torque, I would be recommending you the T4. Now, do what you want with that information, okay? The T4, if if I'm riding the V12 and I'm riding the T4 side by side, and they're both working, and I'm on both of them, and they're charged to the same you know specs and everything and I could choose which one I wanted to be on, I would choose the T4. I'm being absolutely serious. I would choose the T4 to be on riding it. But it just comes down to this. The InMotion V12 has not failed me, dude. I've given that thing so much hell and just been so hard on that wheel, and I have literally thrashed it to the point where I thought I was going to tear it up. And I just have been so hard on that thing, just because I even have an extra screen for it, too, because uh, I, I cracked the screen on the top of my V12, and I have an extra one out there. And so I've purposely just been thrashing my V12 high torque because I'm not worried about tearing up the screen on it. So I was like, all right, hell, I'll just destroy this screen on it, just thrash it, and then I'll replace it. And, dude, it just keeps going, bro. I cannot tear up my V12 high torque. I, the rim is still perfect. There's not a single dent in the thing. I have smashed into rocks done huge drops on it taking that thing on to multiple states adventures everywhere and man my v12 high torque looks like it has been through combat it has scratches all over it it literally has war wounds everywhere but it keeps going i mean it just keeps going and so that's why i would recommend it over the t4 to to you guys watching straight up and it also has more watt hours in it. The V12 high torque has more range and it's $500 less than the T4. 
Now, the T4 has suspension, of course. It's a great ride, like I said. Okay? It's a great ride, 100%. But if I didn't have a V12 high torque and I wanted something in this category of a 17-inch, like, good little trail riding, torquey wheel to rip around on, you know, not an extreme range wheel, um, but a fun wheel, I would get V12 high torque again. Um, T4... I don't know, man. I have to see again. I have to. I, I I enjoy it, but I just can't recommend it. I just cannot recommend it. I enjoy it, but I, I just would not spend twenty five hundred dollars on it right now. All right, so now we need to talk about these two on here as well, because these this, you're getting a whole whole shebang. Let's talk about the King Song S eighteen and In Motion V eleven. Because these are two wheels that still sell a lot, guys. In motion, in motion V11 and S18 are still two hot ticket items. The V11 is a top seller on Amazon. Uh, this so In Motion has their full line of electric unicycles out on Amazon, and this one is just one that's selling on there, guys. Just because they have it at like 1,800 bucks on Amazon, and they're selling the shit out of them over there. And I, I got the links below if y'all want to buy one from Amazon. I got the links below. Make sure you use the links from Amazon below because it, it gives me a kickback as well. I literally think I get more commission from the Amazon links than I do from the <laughs> from the e wheel links or whatever. So use them if you can. But anyways, the all right. So the reason I wouldn't buy the InMotion V11 guys is simply this. Um. Okay, I I definitely wouldn't buy it right now because the InMotion V12. <laughs> is cheaper than the v11 so that's a instant reason right there and the biggest reason of course but another reason is simply on this i love the way the inmotion v11 rides i got videos up of riding this thing through the mountains cranking on it i did extreme adventure rides on this thing and i i liked it guys and i i even took this thing to like some mountain bike parks and stuff where you had some doubles to hit and whatnot and I like the suspension on it, of course. But the whole thing with this wheel, dudes, the number one reason I would not buy the V11 is this. If you crash this thing, it is going to be destroyed. I mean, you can crash it a few times at a low speed, but you wreck this V11 going anywhere over 35 miles an hour, and the damn thing is going to be in pieces, okay? So this whole assembly up top right here, you see, this whole part where it travels up and down is uh, the design looks beautiful guys if you look at a v11 head on everything it looks great and if you're a rider that's not extreme and you just want something to cruise on and you're one of those people that's confident with that knows you're not going to be crashing go with it 100 percent go with it but if you're one of the people that likes off-road trail riding or you've watched any of my videos to get inspiration and you want to go ride trails and shit like that don't buy this thing because you're going one crash over 35 miles an hour and it head impacts on this this whole upper assembly this whole thing is going to be destroyed and i've seen so many v11s completely in shambles guys just ruined i mean just ruined from and the crashes aren't bad so like for instance you could crash this at 35 miles an hour and then crash like the um let's see like you could crash like that 35 and then say you crashed uh what's it the exn like the exn see like the body design on this like it's not as pretty for sure this is just a plastic shell somebody looking at this would be like oh bgo's cheap this right here this shell guys you can get a brand new one from pretty much any company out there for like 200 bucks get new side panels for like 40 bucks and also on top of that, if this goes down, it's literally just going to roll and slide on this. It's not going to get damaged. If you crash this V11, dudes, I'm telling you, the damn thing is going to be unnoticeable. You're going to have wires hanging out, shit broken everywhere. That's the one downfall and one reason I wouldn't buy this, okay? Now, now we're looking at the Kingsong S18 over here. To be short and sweet with this, guys... The S18, I think, is a great-looking wheel. I think it's an incredible-looking wheel. I think it is one of the best-looking wheels out there by far, okay? 
I think um, if you're a slower trail rider, if you're somebody that just got into the hobby, entry level trail riding wheel right here. Somebody that is is not an extreme trail rider. Somebody that just wants to cruise easy in the trails and get something for a low price. This is what you're going to want to get right here. You just want suspension and you don't want to break the bank and you're not an extreme rider and you just want to cruise easy. Get this. But if you've seen any of the hardcore trail riders, any of the races, um, if you're one of the people that's leaning into it and really going, don't get this thing, guys. It just does not have the power. See that? 903 watt hours, guys. You're paying $2,300 for 903 watt hours, okay? Look at, look at the V12 high torque. The V12 high torque, guys, is 1750 watt hours and you're paying two thousand dollars right now for the for the high torque one it's only two thousand bucks right now and you're getting literally almost double the literally double the battery and that's one thing that people aren't looking at so i don't there's no way i would buy the s18 right now okay i was trying to be nice and like say okay yeah i'd get it if i'm an easy trail rider i wouldn't buy the s18 anymore dudes it's just underpowered and overpriced for the watt hours you get and, and the amount of power you get out of the damn thing. I personally overpowered one of the S18s. I literally took off and went across the intersection and I, I wanted to get across the intersection fast and I overpowered it. I just dumped it, man. I literally leaned into it like if I was on like a M Super uh, Pro or, you know, the V12 high torque or one of my faster wheels and the thing just cut out on me. It just didn't have the power. This is one of the only wheels I've ever cut out. But I love the look of it. I think they nailed the design of it, man. It's a beautiful wheel. Just, I wouldn't buy it. All right, so now, now we've got kind of all the mid-range wheel, wheels out of the way. This, 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 we need to talk about the B-Goat Hero, okay? This is a weird-ass wheel, and not a lot of people have it. I think if they would have send it to a few more people to demo or whatever i think there'd be a lot more people to have it but dude nobody really got this wheel to demo uh, nobody really talked about it much i never even saw much content on it i know i didn't get one to make content on um and that's just why there's not much out there there's just not much i mean you really don't see much of this thing ever um but i can tell you basically this is what to expect with it um it's basically like a b-goat master guys this is basically like a b-goat master and it's just going to ride a little bit different it's not going to have that so this is a perfect explanation the b-goat master is the motocross bike the b-goat hero is your cross country bike and i can literally tell that this one would ride in a different way just the way the suspension the way the design on this thing is it's going to have a less kind of a peppy um aggressive type ride to it it's going to be more of a trail riding wheel right here it's 1440 watt hours guys and let's the master let's let's check the master out so you're going between the master and this one what is this one over here okay so 3250 bucks for the master and you got 2004 let's see right here look what the high range what's the price 3250 for the high range the same price for the high range and high power on the master so guys I did, simply because the master is out that's why you don't see much of the hero anymore like the hero had its like three month reign where it was out and a lot of people looked at it and wanted it um, but people weren't going to spend the money for it um and i see why now and, and like it's just a, a perfect example of why uh people didn't buy it uh, is because they waited a little bit and the master came out and i don't think that'd be the case necessarily now but it was the case in this little kind of jump between this one to this one um there's no there's simply no way i, I would buy a b goat hero right now um with the master being out there's just no way there's just no reason Unless you like the look of it, um, personally, I think 
I think the hero looks more durable. I think you could probably crash this thing a little bit harder and a few more times than the master, but that's the only selling point, really, honestly. That's really, really the only selling point if I, I'm thinking about it. So there's there's really no reason to buy the ma the hero, guys. 1440 watt hour battery is less than the master, and it's the same price. And it's just there's no reason I, no reason to buy. The, okay, look at like I was saying durability. Look at this. The batteries are encased in metal on the hero. So that that's the thing. The batteries are encased in metal on the hero. If you look at the master over here, the batteries are encased in plastic. So the whole outside, using Kuji's picture right here, the whole outside of these batteries right here are just plastic, guys. And then the batteries on the Hero are all encased in metal. But there's no, I, I would get the Master over the Hero any day. So that's that. <laughs> Put it simple. I don't know why this is... This should be a lower price. With this being out right now, um, this should come down to like $2,700. And then people would probably still buy this. I think that's exactly what they should do. I think they should lower the price on the Hero to about $2,700. And it would still be a viable option. But there's no way I would still pay the same price for this when this is out. I'd go with this all day, every day, because this is 134 volts. This is only 100 volts. Okay? This is only a 100 volt wheel. The Master's 134 volts. All right, so then you got this, guys. You got these two wheels on here that look all the same. Actually, you got four wheels on here that basically look all the same. Actually, five wheels all look the same. You got the EX20. The Master, the T4, the Master X, and the Master Pro. And they all have this same design, same look to it. And it may be confusing to, to, to some people. It, it certainly, when I first saw these two, the Beagle Master and Master X on here, I thought the, the damn website was a glitch or something. I'm like, why, would there, why is there the same picture for this? And l let me break it down for you guys because this is... This is a narrow demographic, guys. I, I seriously do not think there's... I, I may be wrong. There might be ballers out there in the EUC world, bro. I don't know. I don't understand. But it, I just don't see people spending $4,600 on an electric unicycle, bro. And there being a lot of people to do it. Like, I really don't. Uh, I think it's... I think this is awesome that this is out. I think this is absolutely, it's crazy, okay, 4,800 watt hours, guys, that's why this thing's so expensive, this thing literally will go, like, think, 4,800 watt hours, your tippet, like, the Inmotion V12, which is a great wheel, like I said, 1,740 watt hours, 1,740, so, I, I don't, I'm not good at math, but how, that's, Damn, that's four. This thing is literally has four times the range, basically, of an in motion V12. Like, literally, f almost four times the range of that wheel. That's insane, dude. You can literally get on this thing. So, let's see. With the. My, my longest range wheel that I personally own is the, the Veteran Sherman. The OG Veteran Sherman at 3,200 watt hour. Okay? I can get on that thing and I can comfortably go out and I can do comfortably as riding as fast as I want 75 miles. Okay? If I'm riding conservative on that thing, I can pull off 80. Okay? I can pull off 80 without having to, to get to the extreme speed throttle. That's 3,200 watt hours and 80 miles of real world riding. Okay? So add... Uh, add extra however many to it. I don't even know how. how. So I add to it 3,200. And then we're going to add an extra 1,600 watt hours on top of that. So basically, this thing is like a OG veteran Sherman and... The batteries of an in motion V12 high torque combined is what the range you're going to be getting out of this thing. To just put it in perspective of what you can kind of think. 
That's literally the range you can get out of this. It's just nuts. It literally is nuts, guys, how far you could ride this wheel. You could ride it. So real world riding on this thing, guys, I would expect real world riding it as fast as you want to, 120, 130 miles, 130 miles A real world hard riding on this thing, 130 miles. Now, if you're babying it, you could go way more, but 130 miles of real world riding and it says a no load speed on this thing of 75.8 miles, eight miles an hour. So at a full charge on this, this is this right here, the Master Pro right here should be the fastest wheel out. It really should be. If you get this thing with the the, the high powered 40T pack, so so it's it's let if you get the high powered pack, it's 3,840 watt hours. If you get the 50 E cells, which is the, the long discharge or whatever cells, you can get the, the 40, 4,800 watt hour battery pack. So be sure, make sure you check that out. And I, I guess you can pick whenever, whenever this thing lands at port, you can pick which one you want to get. Yeah, because there's no option right here. So if you want to get it right now, I assume that once it lands at port, you can pick which one you want to get. But that that is that's crazy right there. That really is, and it's 134 volts too, guys. So this, I mean, you should you should be able to get um, 60, I mean, 60 miles an hour plus comfortably on this thing. Most most riders should be able to do that, and with suspension on this thing, and with the you know with the way. This whole thing set up, it should feel great at that speed. Eighty millimeters of suspension travel on that big wheel, dude. That's crazy, man. That's just wild. I'd love to demo one of these, man. Especially where I live now, cause, cause I live like in the country now, and I need, I just got to get on main roads where I got to go like sixty-five miles an hour to keep up with traffic, and this would be perfect. I'd be able to do all my long-range commutes and everything. Like, like I thinking about it now, and I just see. I do see a use for it. I just don't think a lot of people are going to be buying it. If I had it, I, I damn, I'd love to. I'd love to have it, but I just don't know if I'd love to buy it. I'm gonna be real with you on that. I'd love to have it, but I don't think I'd love to buy this shit for forty six hundred dollars. <laughs> That's fucking crazy, dude. That's a lot of money. <laughs> all right. And, all right, and so now that's the Master Pro right there, the Master X. This one's forty two hundred dollars. This is probably what a lot of people are going to be buying. The Master X is is kind of the sweet spot. It's one hundred thirty four volts. Like everybody definitely wants. You still have suspension in this thing. Um, you got your integrated seat on this thing. You got an insane, which on this one is 22 inches. So if you want a bigger wheel, guys, than the um, Master Pro, this is bigger. This is more of a street cruiser, more of your long range street cruiser. This is the same size wheel as the Master. What is it? No, Master Pro is 24 inches, right? Master Pro is 24. No, both of these are 22 inch wheels, okay? Master, I was thinking the Master Pro might be 24 inches, but no, both of these are the 22 inch wheels. Difference on the Master X is this, 3600 watt hour battery pack instead of that 4800 watt hour battery pack. And then on your, your high powered battery pack, if you get the high powered version, it's 2800 watt hours instead of the 3600 watt hours that we saw on the Master Pro, okay? And... And this one, it's the 4,500 watt high torque motor. Uh, you still get suspension. Um, you can get this choice of knobby or street tire on this thing. So basically, this one is just kind of like the, it's basically the same exact thing as the other one. It's just less watt hours in this one and a less price, okay? So that you can get this one for a lower price, but it just has less watt hours, okay? And it's going to be, of course, it's going to be lighter weight. So if you're a person that doesn't need all that range, definitely get this because it's a cheaper price and it's not as heavy. Okay, so that's basically that. I think these are going to be fun. We like the 
their performance on these is going to be insane, okay? Like, just insane. Put it that way. I mean, these are going to be literally... Like, this wheel right here, if you get this with the high discharge batteries, it's just... It's going to be fast as shit, really. All right, now, looking at the two wheels that I really want to get next. So, after... After looking at, at everything on here, we've come down basically to to the cream of the crop is what I what I want to put it at. Um, and the cream of the crop is going to be for for me is going to be these three right here. And recently, this the Beagle EX30 was not on my radar until I recently started seeing the post from Beagle on their Facebook page. And they've been posting some shit of, of them riding this Beagle EX30. And also, like, the post that sold me on this wheel was a guy. He literally um, had the front wheel up against a wall and was pushing up against the wall with all his force and doing a burnout, standing on this thing. And it was literally just smoking up the room, dude. Um, you could probably find the video if you went and looked for it. I don't want to deal with the copyright, but... Y'all can get the picture. I, I can paint a great picture just with my words. Just listen to me. But he's just standing on the thing. Wheel is up against the wall. He's torqued into the wall leaning. And it is literally doing a full burnout. And it is violently shaking, dude. The wheel, it looks like it is going through a torture test of hell. But he's just standing there. And it is, I mean, a full, full scale burnout. I mean, it looks like somebody was in there with a Harley doing a burnout. Um, but... This thing right here is just a powerhouse, guys. This right here is a total powerhouse from Begoed. Um, this 3600 watt hour battery pack, or you can get the 2880 watt hour uh, battery pack with the, the 40T uh, high discharge shells, but it has an improved battery management system with temperature sensors. I think that's why they were demonstrating the um, standing there just. I mean, doing a burnout on the damn thing. 4,000 watt high torque uh, motor. Um, new generation shock system with uh, rebound providing up to 100 millimeters of travel. So this has more suspension travel than the Master X or the Master Pro. Okay? Um, it comes with a choice. You can get it with the Navi or the street tire. With the Navi, it looks sweet, dude. This this wheel with the Navi looks really good. I know there's not a lot of pictures or information about this thing out to make your decision on it, but trust me, if you want, if you just want a long range, high speed, high powered, badass wheel, um, this not gonna fail on you from like over torquing or like just being crazy as hell. You could ride this thing straight up like a dirt bike dude like from what what i've seen on it so far and it just it holds it it's just a powerhouse it's just a freaking powerhouse and it has this is why it has 36 mosfets in it guys and your mosfets are if you look at a motherboard on euc guys um the the motherboards back on the ones where i first started writing guys they had six mosfets on it okay literally it's like the black little squares that go across the motherboard, the little black squares on there. And they basically are like, I'm not going to get into it. I could probably look this up and I should probably know. But basically, it's where the power goes through those damn things. And you want a lot of them on the motherboard. The more, the merrier. Okay, the more MOSFETs you have, the, the, less, the less likely it is to fail. Okay, and the better the MOSFETs are, the less likely it is to fail, basically. And like the V12 high torque, for example, has a lot of MOSFETs in it. That's why the motherboards are great in that damn thing. And this one, you got 36 MOSFETs, okay? Um, 36, 36X to 263 MOSFETs. So I don't, I guess this is 36 more, uh, you literally have 36 individual MOSFETs in this thing on the motherboard, which is insane. And basically what that means is, is like I said, that's why the guy was sitting there doing the standing burnout on it against the wall is all like the, the think about that when you're doing a standing burnout on this against the wall, like the violent jerking up and down and it hopping and stuff, because it's not just a straight burnout. It's like tires skipping and hopping and stuff like that. That's sending surges of power, like random surges of power and shit all through the motherboard. 
And also for thinking about like jumping, you see these guys doing the big jumps now, um, like hitting like legit MX ramps and landing. Think about when you're landing, guys. That's a lot of force surging because you're you're come and say if you don't land perfectly, say if you land farther back on the wheel, farther on the front of it, what you want is the MOSFETs. You want a lot of MOSFETs in there because that's a lot of power surging on those components of that motherboard. And the more MOSFETs in there the better and so now I just think this this wheel right here um, it, it's god it's ugly as hell but man I think it's gonna be one of the t highest performance wheels we've ever seen um, uh, I, I don't think it's, it's not gonna be the longest range I don't think it's gonna be the best for like I, I if I could choose to have this or like the the Bego master the rent the regular B Go Master um, for like a off road race, I would definitely want the regular B Go Master because it's not going to be as heavy. Okay, one of the main things you got to think about, guys, like like a wheel like this is great for the people that don't race out there. So like, there's only a few wheels that are going to be good for racing, guys. Like the B Go Master just shines great because it's 134 volts. And it doesn't have a ton of range in it. And that's one thing you want when it comes to your your race wheel. Because more range, the more weight, okay? So with this one, this is going to be for the people out there that want to want the highest performance wheel, but also want a lot of range in it, okay? This is, this is going to be a great option. I know it's just ugly as shit. Um, I think once you get some aftermarket power pads on this thing and some upgraded pedals, maybe a new fairing system or something from one of the aftermarket guys if you got the money to buy this thing you got money to buy the aftermarket fairing system to get it all pimped out and set up the way you want and you know get all get it flashy and dialed in the way you want to um but i think this will be and just a, a top wheel right here this really will be a top wheel um it's just as freaking ugly and Again, not a lot of people really talking about it much. Not a lot of stuff out there on it. Save the best for last, okay? Save the best for last. Straight up. And these are the two that I'm probably most excited about right here. Out of all the wheels on here, like, if I, if I could get two right now, these are the two I'd want to get, okay? Actually, I, I, want, all three, I want all three of these. To be real with you, I kind of want all three of these evenly. But these two right here are just great looking wheels. They completely miss the boat. They put, like Be Good always does, this thing is going to be high performance, but it is just ugly. These are beautiful, okay? The Sherman Leopard Kim, the, the maker, the people that make this wheel right here, make the Sherman. Um, they make beautiful products, guys. They make fine products. The only th the only wheel they missed with was the Abrams, and guys, the Abrams gets a lot of hate. And okay, what I'm gonna just go ahead and tell y'all the one wheel when it comes to electric unicycles I really wouldn't buy is the Veteran Abrams, okay? And it's it's simply not because it's a it's a bad wheel. It's not because it was made bad, anything like that. The one thing people don't talk about with the Abrams guys is this is simply not weighted right. They put all the weight at the top in the Abrams, and they V-tapered the Abrams to come down. So all, if you look at like a veteran Abrams, I mean, I don't even think E-Wheel sells them anymore because it was such a bad wheel. Do they sell the Abrams anymore? I hope they don't. Holy shit, I hope they don't. No, they don't. Okay, so you got the, the Sherman Max on here, and then the, the veteran Abrams is just not, I don't even think, it, is it sold on at E-Rides? Let's see, is it? No, bro, they stopped selling it everywhere, bro. They really did, dude. They really stopped selling it everywhere. That's no joke. Do they have, let's see. Nope, they don't have it, bro. It's, they don't have it. <laughs> they don't have it. All right, so the, the reason they don't have this wheel anymore on any of the sites, guys, is simply because the the veteran Abrams was was 
not um the design of it was wrong so when it comes to like a a sports car or anything if you ever look at a bugatti you look at any sports car a lamborghini anything out there that is anything that rides right on the road all the weight predominantly the wider part is at the bottom of the car and then it tapers up so you would never see a car that was larger at the top and tapered down and then put the wheels at a smaller point in the bottom okay if that makes sense i'm explaining to y'all exactly perfectly why the abrams sucks okay literally all the weights up here it v tapers to the bottom so when you're riding it there's literally no way to control that thing if you rode that thing for 3,000 miles, got the perfect power pad set up on it, you simply could not control that thing as good as you could any other wheel that was weighted right, guys, that had the weight, the batteries in the center of gravity set up in the right way, okay? So that's why you can't find that thing on any of the websites anymore. And it's literally great hardware, great, great software in it, literally great components, terrible 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 design on the way that the weight was set up all the weight at the top v tapered to the bottom it just shakes like hell okay so that's why the abrams i wouldn't get it but i think that veteran as a company overall is outstanding okay so i don't think that wheel was a failure when it came to hardware at all or anything on their part i i that's what i'm getting to i think that it's that their components um, and their expertise in engineering when it comes to their wheels veteran is is top top notch um, Out of all my wheels out there if I had one to grab I have all the wheels I have if I had one to grab and go with it would be my veteran Sherman my OG veteran Sherman um, because it, it It is an expensive wheel um, It has a lot of range in it, and I just love the roll bar a look on it I love the design I love I just love that wheel um, I don't like it for everything though that's the, the thing of why like it's so hard to say like what wheel is the perfect wheel if I had two to choose from everyone on here guys from the ones I own personally okay giving you a rundown of ones I have a ton of miles on I would get the the Sherman Max on here for sure I would want to have the Sherman Max and the V12 high torque V12 high torque for all my jumping, my trail riding, uh, my playing around, my short rides, all that type of stuff, throwing in the truck, and then to have the Sherman to do all my long range rides on and stuff like that. Sherman Max. And this right here at $3,800, guys, we get a 3,600 watt hour wheel. You all saw how expensive all the other wheels are we just looked at. They're, they're up in the $4,000 plus price that are $3,600 if you're getting suspension. So if you want something that's fast, has a lot of range, is totally reliable, and something I personally really, really like and recommend, I would get the Sherman Max, even though it doesn't have suspension, okay? Now, if you want to spend the extra money on it and you want to get the latest and greatest, go ahead and get the go ahead and get the Sherman the Sherman S. I, I think I think the Sherman S is one of the, the best wheels on the website right now, simply because it has a lot of watt hours and the build quality is exceptional. I think this is, and it has suspension, a lot of travel. I've seen uh, several videos of this thing. It, the build quality is simply why I would buy it. Just the build quality, guys. It, there's probably other faster wheels. Uh, definitely, you know, more range with like the uh, Master Pro. But this, the build quality on this thing is going to impress you. This is going to feel like, a, uh, like really, you're going to be, you're going to feel like you got a great piece of kit. You're going to be really, really happy with your investment if you buy this wheel, as opposed to anything else, really. Okay? And at 3,600 watt hours, you're getting the watt hours you pay for with this wheel. Okay? Now, getting to the, that kind of branches us straight into the next thing. Top quality wheel with, you know, probably the highest speed right now on the website is the InMotion V13. The only reason, the, the biggest downfall of this wheel and the reason I wouldn't buy this, guys, um, over 
the reason I wouldn't buy this wheel is simply because it's 3,000 watt hours, guys. They really screwed up on this wheel. They made it very heavy. It's just as big and just as heavy as the Sherman S. But the Sherman S has 600 more watt hours, guys, for about the same exact price. This has great suspension, a great design, a beautiful wheel, but it has 600 more watt hours for the same price as the V13, basically, okay? And that small price difference does not justify the 600 watt hour price difference, okay? That's, that's, it's $4,000 for this wheel, and it's $4,100 for the Sherman S. And I would, if, if, I, if I literally had the cash in hand and I had Sherman S right here or the V13 right here, cash in hand, I'd, I'd buy the Sherman S every time, dude. I really would. Um, and I, I would I want to ride both of them to really tell you. I mean, the ride on the V13 may be that much better. It may just be elegant. It may just be soft and smooth and, you know, ride great and have good acceleration, et cetera, et cetera. But if I got the cash in hand, knowing what I know just by looking at the specs and by looking at the early videos and whatnot that I've seen, I'm definitely definitely putting my money on the Sherman S over the V13 and that's that so if I had one to buy right now with my hard earned money it'd be this one straight up if I'm going for the mad daddy all out high performance want the nicest thing on the website right now this is what I'm buying right here straight up that's it and it's not 134 volts. It's still 100 volts. But this is just, I think it's, I think it's the best build quality and best performance um, and best watt hours and et cetera, et cetera, that you can get for the price. So that would be my performance wheel of choice right here. But the other ones are, these are just, you got to pick. It's just all kind of preference, guys, on, on the top wheels. Once you get to the top wheels, even the EX20, guys, like some people may want this one. You, look, like you can choose on this one if you want the high torque motor, high speed motor. You can choose your battery option, 3600 watt hours if you want. And you can choose your, your tire option. And this is in stock right now. And this is 4000 bucks. Okay? And the people that have gotten these have loved them. You know, people have gotten these or love them. It's just a heavy wheel, and you got to know what you're getting. This isn't going to be, you know, something you can throw around nearly as easy as, like, a V12 high torque and the trails and everything. So, it's going to be way heavier. So, and this one is 126 volts, guys. So, the Vigo EX20 is is a unique wheel as well. you got all these other options up here, but I just don't think that this is going to be something people are buying when the Sherman S is out. I wouldn't buy this at all. I mean, you look at like the build quality of this and then look at the Sherman S and I think a toddler would be smart enough to go for the Sherman S over this. All right, to sum everything up and to hit some of the wheels that I didn't get into depth about and, and talk really a lot about, I'm going to put it this way and sum it up quick. Um, make it easy for you guys. All right, uh, Commander Pro, I wouldn't get this one because... There's just better options for the watt hours out there. I wouldn't be buying this one, okay? I think this is uh, or the B Code Commander, just a normal B Code Commander. I think this is this was a great wheel for its time. There's better things at the price point. Um, I wouldn't be buying this. Put it simple. The e EXN, I think it's still a great wheel. A great wheel. I think this thing is. Um, I, I personally have one. I love it. This is a hybrid wheel. This is great for trail riding, great for the city, great do-it-all wheel. It doesn't have suspension. I think it's at a great price point for the watt hours, and I think this is a definitely definite go-to for the do-it-all type of rider, adventure rider. It's not a great race wheel just because it is heavy and it has way more watt hours than you would ever need in a race. Um, I did race on it before, and it is fast. You can race it if you want to, um, but I don't think it is. Uh, if you're looking to get a race wheel, I would look elsewhere, like at the Master. But for the price point, it's hard to beat this because you get a ton of range, guys. 
Like for it, you literally get you get 2,700 watt hours, okay? And with the so that's almost a thousand more watt hours, and it's a thousand more dollars than like the V12 high torque, but you get a thousand more watt hours. So it's basically like paying a dollar a watt hour over the V12 high torque. So this is this is basically just a if you want more range in the V12 high torque, I would get this, okay? To make it simple for you. And you can also pick, well, you used to be able to pick if you wanted high torque or high speed, but it looks like they just have the high speed, okay? But great wheel. EXN, great wheel, great price. That's my opinion on that. RS19, great wheel. Um, it's a great racing wheel all around, absolute one of the best B goad wheels ever made. Only problem is right now the V12 high torque beats it because the V12 high torque is on sale and I would definitely spend uh, my money if I could get the V12 high torque for $2,000 as opposed to buying this for $2,500. Okay, make it simple. Sherman Max outstanding wheel. I think this is still going to be a top selling wheel for you know, probably the next two years to come, just because it will remain at a lower price than the other suspension wheels, while it has the same watt hours as some of those high-end uh, suspension wheels. And a lot of people don't need suspension. I love riding my Sherman, my OG Sherman that doesn't have suspension. Got my tire pressure right, I can go all day on that thing riding and have a blast. I think this is a great price point and a great wheel. This one, 18XL, like I said, again, I re highly recommend this for beginners. This is one of the top beginner wheels you can get. Only problem is the V12 high torque is better than this, and the V12 high torque is on sale, and it's at basically the same price, so I'd get the V12 high torque right now over this. Now, if you're looking at this at a different date, and $500 is you know your breaking point between buying a wheel and not buying a wheel, I would get an EUC and get this one. That's my two cents on that. The Bigo Nicola, okay? Now I've rode this before. You haven't seen it on my channel, but I have rode it before. I've gone to a group ride. I switched off with a guy and I rode the Nicola around for a whole day. So I know all about this wheel. And I can tell you, it's a great wheel. I love it. The lights on it are sweet. The light ring is awesome on it. It's basically it's basically like B Goad's version of the In Motion V12. Only problem is the V12 is at a cheaper price point, and I think the V12 is way better than this. Even though this is a sick little wheel, V12 beats it in every way, shape, and form. Okay. Now, V12, you already know this is top wheel. This gets certified star of approval right here. Absolute banger. Of for price, performance, everything. That's what I feel about this. For mid-range entry all the way to advanced riders, this is an absolute banger of a wheel. King Song 16X, do not buy this thing. This is my opinion on this. This has 96 five-star reviews on it, um, probably because most of the people that get this wheel are people that do not thrash it. These are predominantly people that buy this are people that I see they're just cruising around town, um, maybe doing a few tricks here and there. Uh, it goes fast. It's a great wheel. But at $2,000, again, I would definitely not buy this because you can get the V12 high torque, which has more watt hours and is just way better than this thing. I overpowered this, guys. The two wheels I've overpowered and dumped just from surging, the only two wheels I've ever done it on are the 16X and the King Song. Uh, 18s or the s18 okay so that just shows dude and i don't have anything against king song okay i don't even though i've done that i don't have anything against king song i was riding the shit out of these wheels when i did that so i'm just telling you these are not for advanced riders okay they're great wheels great hardware but not to be abused and ridden fast or hard okay that's that and v12 high torque again way better way way better bang for your buck than this shit don't buy this when you can get this tesla v3 i think this is a great wheel 
Um, only thing is, guys, you're getting the shit rims. The sh same shit rims you get with the V12 high speed comes on this wheel, okay? That's why I wouldn't buy this, okay? That's simply that. Cut and dry. In motion V10F at $1,500. This is a great option. V10F, outstanding wheel. Um, pedals are high on it. It doesn't have suspension, but at $1,500. You really can't go wrong, okay? That's my opinion on this wheel. It's a funky wheel. The lights are great on it. It's skinny. It's weird. Not a lot of people have this wheel. The trolley handle on it's pretty damn cool. The V10F, if you got 1500 bucks and you want something nice for 1500 bucks exactly, get the V10F. 16S, you can't go wrong with it. It's tried and true. I wanted to see them upgrade this thing over the years, and I think they have now. I think the new King Song 16S's, I think they actually have upgraded this thing, and they're different than the older ones. I think they actually have new, uh, different power pads on them now, and new pedals. Um, but this, this right here is a great beginner wheel, a great beginner to intermediate wheel. Uh, King Song nailed it with this one. I personally have a King Song 16S that I never overpowered. And I rode it pretty hard, okay? And so, it just is not a fast wheel. It doesn't go very fast, but the range on it's really good for how small it is. It's a little 16-inch wheel. It's a little tiny thing, but it's a great option. All right, InMotion V8S and the, v, the V8F and all these wheels up here, guys, this is, these are, are, these are your ultimate kind of like beginner wheels you get, kind of got going on in here. Um, and then you got the 16S. This, this is my take on this. If I'm, if I'm going to be getting anything in this category, guys, anything up here, I'm either going to go with the 14S or the 16S. I, I really would. The 14D, guys, is a great wheel. But look at this, though. This is what you got to look at with the 14D. Okay? You only get, for 420 watt hours, guys, on this, like, you're, they, it's not much battery power. For $900, guys, it's just not much battery power in this thing. Okay? Like, it's a great wheel. King Song is a great beginner wheel, 100%. But if you can just fork out the extra buck, to get this one, the 14S over the 14D, the the bot this from the outside you can't tell the difference, but you literally get twice the battery power in the 14S, and it goes way faster in comparison to the 14D. Now these aren't very fast wheels, but this the 14S is the S stands for sport, and same with this one, the 16S stands for sport. Um, these you can definitely tell a, a big difference in speed and range compared to this if you can just bump it up and get the 14s okay i personally have never rode these are two wheels i personally have never tried guys is a v a in motion v8f or a vas i i swear i've never tried either one of these things so i cannot tell you between these two which one i would get these are just two out of all of them i have no experience with i i really cannot tell you about these two at all i assume they're they're probably pretty good okay probably probably great great beginner wheels but i personally know the king song 16s and the 14s are great great beginner wheels okay so ex20 i think it's a cool wheel i think the design on this thing is sick. Pretty much all metal design on this thing. Only problem is at four thousand dollars, you can get you can get like the Sherman S now. Okay, so I would definitely not be buying this right now. I'd be buying putting my money for like the Sherman S or something. Okay, so this cool for a while it lasted for like a year while it was out. Better shit now. Master, this is a great all around performance wheel. Um, I don't own one, but it gets my star of approval because I've seen great things about it. 134 volts, race wheel, performance wheel, trail riding wheel, Master is a great wheel. I wouldn't buy a Hero because Master's out. I wouldn't buy an InMotion V11 
um, because it can just one crash on this thing over 35 and this whole entire top assembly and everything is getting destroyed. That's why I'm not buying this. S18, too low of watt hours resulting in not enough power resulting in easy to cut out. I wouldn't buy this wheel either. Unless you're a kid or a brand new rider. And also it's just too expensive for the amount of watt hours you get. I wouldn't buy this wheel. S18, V11 are dead now. V12 has taken over these two. Even though they're suspension wheels, um, I mean, I would get the T4 V2 over these two even now. I wouldn't, I really wouldn't be, I don't know, I wouldn't be buying these two wheels right now. I just wouldn't. V12 over these two, even though these have suspension, my opinion. Uh, S22, this one is just in its own unique category out of all these wheels on here, guys. The S22, I think, is a great wheel. Um, I think a lot of the slider issues and shit you're seeing with people having on this, like the way the slider mechanism is, I think a lot of it's paranoia, dude. I think a lot of these people don't have problems, aren't going to have problems with the sliders. And I think um, a lot of them are just buying the shit because they see other people buying the shit. So I, I think it's a great wheel. And I, I, don't, I don't think you need um, to worry about the slider issue on it. I think if you want to get a wheel to do jumps, to ride trail, like rugged trails, I'm talking like gnarly trails where you got drops, like black diamond type mountain bike trails, and um, you know, stuff like that, like like enduro cross type riding and, and just rugged in, enduro trails and stuff is what the S22 is for. And also for racing, if you wanna put a street tire on the S22, it's a 126 volt wheel, guys. It's fast. It it hauls ass, and the torque like, the torque on it's not great. But the weird thing is, guys, once you get this like the torque from like, 10 miles an hour to like 30 miles an hour is at a sweet spot on this, and I can tell you that from riding it on the racetrack. The S22 is a great wheel. I think the S22 is, uh, it's just in a unique category. It's just. I think it's awesome though. I think it's a great wheel. Um, T4. I think the first T4, the first T4 V1 was a total fail. I think them sending the T4 out to all those people and all the people buying it with the motor stator slippage issue and the shit. Uh, I, I I think the T first T4 was a disaster. I think the T4 V2 is incredible. Okay, so all the new T4 is going forward now. All the new ones that you buy, if you're watching this video, if you buy a T4, you're going to love it. They've worked out all the issues thanks to, you know, many other people buying them first. And then people like me that went out there and caused a, a stator slippage issue. So they were able to fix them. The V2 T4 will be great. I'm excited to get my new um, V2 motor with the knobby tire and start riding some trails again on my T4. I love this wheel. I think just the first um, quality, the quality control on the first batch, uh, B goad. I mean, really, I mean, B goad. Come on, the quality control on the first batch. Y'all know that was shit. Y'all are wrong for sending those out. Honestly, I'm, I think they they fixed that. I don't. I don't think they're gonna be doing that again. I think it was such a disaster for everybody involved including the resellers with the first V1 T4, uh, that Vigo is not going to do that again because it costs everybody time and money um, unnecessarily. So Vigo, don't do that shit again. Make sure the damn thing works right before you send it out. That's why I used to test wheels before, for you guys before y'all had people in flip-flops and a rain jacket and a half-shell helmet ride it around the factory at four miles an hour. You can't tell if the thing is going to work if you ride it around the factory at four miles an hour. If you send one over here to somebody that rides trails on it and tries to jump logs and stuff on it, I can tell y'all if it's going to be a problem in it before you send them out to everybody and cause everybody a ton of problems and cost everybody a bunch of money. So that's why you should send them out to testers instead of riding around the factory and posting a three-second Facebook video of the wheel. And you should actually hook up the YouTubers that put you on the map in the first place and let them test your damn wheels. So that would prevent you from having many more problems. So Be Good Master X, I think this is gonna be a sweet wheel. This is basically the 
a 22 inch fast mid-range version of the master um, it's basically just a master pro with less watt hours and it costs less so that's basically that um m104 great little wheel fun little play around novel novelty wheel highly recommend this thing for the price point great great wheel and fun for everybody beginners all the way to advanced sick wheel loving mine vigo ex30 i think is going to be one of the top performance wheels we've, we've seen in a long time it's just an ugly underdog with not a lot of info out there or uh, good content promoting it yet so that's why there's not a lot of hype behind it but i think the ex30 is going to be badass uh, sherman s if i could put my money on one i'd get this sherman s uh, v13 i think this would have been great if it would have been like 3600 watt hours plus only reason i wouldn't buy it it's just because it's too expensive when it, you compare it to other wheels that have more watt hours in it. Looks great though. Looks like it's just top quality. Um, probably going to be fast. Probably going to be beautiful. Um, but that's that. That's kind of my rundown on all the wheels. Um, anyways, I hope that was helpful to some of y'all. I don't know. It was probably kind of um, blunt when it comes to some of this, but this is real, man. I've literally kind of have experience with, with most of these wheels, if not all of them, and I can tell you exactly like what's up with it. So um, if that was helpful, throw it a thumbs up. If y'all want to see more content like this or me to break down a little bit more in depth some of these uh, categories, let me know. But anyways, dudes, it's been Chooch. If y'all enjoyed the video, throw it a thumbs up. Use the links below, guys. Doesn't matter what wheel you get, doesn't matter what brand you get, just make sure you use the links below to whatever reseller, whether it be E-Wheels, Rev Rides, Alien Rides, or um, E-Rides. Use any of the four. Just make sure you use the links below if any of my videos helps you out in making your decision to get your wheel. It really helps me out at no extra cost to you. Best way to help the channel. Best way to help me keep my motivation up for doing these videos for you guys. Anyways, I'll see you dudes in the next one. Have a good one.